examination station. Can you please demonstrate how you would assess this patient's airway as part of your preoperative assessment? And please explain what you're doing as you go along. As part of any of my routine pre-op assessment, I would take a full anaesthetic history. Would you like me to do that? That's not necessary here, just please examine. Okay. Hi there, sir. My name's Dr. Davis, I'm one of the anaesthetists. I've been asked to have a look at your airway and explain what I'm doing as I'm going along. Is that going to be okay? Absolutely fine. Okay. okay. So I'd start my examination with a general inspection, um, inspecting from, 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 a, from a short distance, looking for any signs of gross obesity, any obvious beard, um, any obvious deformity of the neck from the front, such as masses or scars or burns. That's lovely, sir. Thank you. Um, I'd also make a quick note and see if there was any large breast which may interfere with laryngoscopy. Moving to the side, um, to inspect from the side, I'm looking specifically again at the neck for any signs of, of obvious deformity. I'm looking at the back of the neck for any large fat pad which may interfere with neck movement. I'm also looking for the position of the mandible and any obvious overbite that may be present. Moving on to, uh, to my assessment of the airway, I would um, look for a look at the nose and the mouth. Looking at the nose, I'm looking for any obvious deformity, uh, any bony abnormality, any deviation of the septum, or any um, septal hematomas which may interfere. At this point, I'd like to assess the patency of the nostrils. Can you include one nostril after the other and blow out for me, sir? Lovely. And the other side? Beautiful. So the, the right one there appeared more patent than the left. Do you agree? Okay. So moving on to the mouth, I would um, first just external assessment, everything looks symmetrical and even. I would like to ask the patient to open his mouth as wide as you can, that's lovely. Can you pop three fingers in there for me vertically? Lovely, so uh, into incisal distance is great there. I had a quick, um, I had a very good view rather of Malin Patty score there, which was a Malin Patty grade one. I'd also like to inquire about dentition, and I observed that it was very good dentition there. Um, any um, false or um, wobbly teeth? Two caps at the front. Two no, caps. nothing wobbly. No, and they're fixed. Lovely. Okay. And other than the caps, nothing else. No. No. Okay. I'd now like to assess for overbites. Um, with your bottom jaw, sir, can you protrude it in front of your top teeth? Lovely. So he doesn't have an overbite, and he's got very good mandibular protrusion um, range of movement there. Good. So moving on, I'd like to assess the neck. So having a ins general inspection from the neck, again, there are no obvious masses, um, there's no obvious um, deviation of the neck, and there's no scarring or burns. Um, I'd like to assess range of movement in the neck by asking the patient, pop your chin on your chest for me, sir, that's lovely. Come back to where you are, looking from the side, pop your head far back as you can, looking up at the ceiling. That's lovely, so there's an excellent range of movement there in the neck. Whilst examining the neck, I'd like to look at specific distances, um, namely the thyromental distance and the sternomental distance. I'll start with the thyromental distance, if I may. Can you look up for me as wide as you can, and I'm just going to feel your neck. So feeling from the thyroid notch up to the tip of the chin, to the mentum, assessing, clearly assessing this, and that looks great. That looks greater than six and a half centimetres. That's perfect. And in the same position there, sir, if you can, feeling the sternal notch, and then measuring up to the momentum again, it's greater than one of my hand spans, so I don't identify any difficulties there in the um, sternal mental distance. That's great, relax, sir. Okay. So that would complete my routine airway examination. So you mentioned the thyromental distance and the sternal mental distance. What measurements would lead you to a suspected difficult intubation? So, uh, thyromental distance of uh, less than six centimetres would concern me. Um, and a, a sternal mental distance of less than 12 centimetres would be concerning as well. You also mentioned the Malin Party score. How is this graded? Um, the Malin Party score um, is graded 1 to 4 based on the view obtained on um, a direct inspection of the um, oropharynx with the patient in the neutral position um, and with their mouth open as wide as possible and their tongue um, protruded. Um, grade 1 view, um, you are able to visualise both the hard and the soft palate, um, the uvula, and the entire uvula and the um, uh, tonsillar pillars. Um, grade 2 is where the hard and the soft palate um, are visible and the tonsillar pillars are lost um, and you can't um, visualise the entire uvula, but you are able to make it out. Uh, grade, grade 3, um, you are only able to see the hard and the soft palate and uh, grade 4, only the hard palate is visualised.
What is the Wilson Risk Score? The Wilson Risk Score is a scoring system by Wilson and colleagues, which is based on five independent factors, which are scored between 0 and 2, and giving you a total score out of 10. Five factors are weight, neck movement, jaw movement, receding mandible, and buck teeth. What do you understand by the term sensitivity and specificity with regards to airway assessment? Sensitivity is the, in a nutshell, is the uh, ability of a positive test um, to identify a difficult laryngoscopy. For example, a high malapati score uh, indicating a difficult laryngoscopy. Specificity is the ability of a negative result or a low scoring, for example, a low malapati grade, identifying an easy laryngoscopy. Name three things you would do if you predict a difficult airway. So three things. Firstly, I would discuss with a senior colleague, ideally a consultant. Um, I would then um, consider whether the surgery was amenable to a regional or local technique. Um, if not, I would uh, consider doing a awake fibre optic technique. Um, finally, um, for any difficult airway, I would like to ensure that I have um, appropriate airway equipment available.